Welcome to the fourth entry in the tutorial series for the MP System version 3. In this tutorial, we'll be adding weapons to the system. This tutorial will cover the entire process from setting up the textures correctly, creating the static and skeletal meshes in Blender from scratch, importing those into Unreal and integrating them into the system. For this tutorial, we'll use the free HK433 by Ubi, which you can get on Sketchfab. After downloading and unzipping the files, we'll convert the textures into TGA files, this is preference, PNG works fine as well, but have larger file sizes. The albedo and normal simply require a file conversion, the remaining textures will be packed into a single texture using the roughness PBR method. This process is simple in Photoshop, but Photoshop is expensive and I want to highlight a great alternative software, called Affinity Photo. The process requires a few extra steps in Affinity, but you'll get the same end result. First, load one texture and convert it into the sRGB format to get all three channels, go to Document, Convert Format and select sRGB. Next, navigate to the Channels tab and create a spare channel and name it Roughness. The original texture can be deleted. Repeat this step for the AO channel and the Metalness channel. Create a new pixel layer. Make sure to fill the pixel alpha layer, otherwise you won't see any changes. Lastly, load each texture into the respective RGB channel. AO goes into red, roughness into the green and metalness into the blue channel. Once completed, save and export. Open Blender, or any other DCC software, and delete the default cube. Make sure that the unit scale is set to 0.01 meters. Import the SMG static mesh to have a scale reference, you can export it from Unreal by right-clicking the SM file inside Unreal, Asset Actions, Export. Next, import the downloaded weapon and scale it down to fit the SMG's dimensions. The SMG can now be hidden. Join the multi-mesh into a single mesh and ensure that the mesh is not nested inside the outliner. If it is, detach it so that it is alone. Apply all transforms. Before we export the mesh, let's create our own physics boundaries. Alternatively, Unreal can create a simple bounding box on import, not very precise. Simply create a cube and adjust it to roughly match the weapon's dimensions. As you can see, you won't fit everything into one box so create several ones as shown. Apply all transforms. It is crucial that you get the naming convention exact. Prefix the box meshes with UCX underscore then use the exact same name as the weapon and end with underscore zero one and so on for each subsequent mesh if you have multiple. Shift select all the box meshes and, in the end, select the actual weapon mesh. Export them as FBX files. Copy the export settings as shown. A good practice is to prefix the file with SM underscore, short for static mesh. Up next, skeletal mesh, a mesh that contains bones and can be animated. The UCX meshes aren't needed for this, so hide them. Add a single bone via armature. Select the mesh and then the bone, then parent them together with automatic weights. At this point, we just want to get the weapon in game, so we won't be adding additional bones just yet. This means we also don't need to worry about weight painting, since we just have one bone in the chain. 
Rename Amateur to Weapon. Select the weapon and then the bone and export them as an FBX file with the same settings as before. First, create folders as shown to maintain a clean structure. Import the textures. They might get imported as virtual textures, in which case we need to change it back to normal textures in order for the Weapon Master material to pick them up. Simply open the texture, search for Virtual Texture Streaming and uncheck it. Additionally, the surface texture needs to have sRGB unchecked to correctly represent the values. Next, import the static mesh with the import settings as shown. Open it up, select Show Collision to make sure that the UXC meshes have imported as well, so traces get recognized and the weapon can receive physics. Import the Skeletal Mesh On import, make sure that Unreal actually recognizes it as a skeletal mesh and that no skeleton is selected. Also ensure that a physics asset gets created. In the physics asset, we're going to delete the bones capsule and right-click on the weapon bone. Select Copy Collision from Static Mesh and choose the imported Static Mesh. Now the weapon bubble can be deleted as well. Finally, in the mesh itself, make sure that the physics asset is applied. Copy the material instance mi underscore smg from the smg folder and paste it into the new weapons directory. Rename it and replace the textures according to their slot by simply dragging them into the fields. Feel free to tweak the sliders above to fine tune the look. Apply this material to both the static mesh and skeletal mesh. If we look closely at the skeletal mesh, we see an awful mush of the normal map. To fix this, simply go into the import settings, mesh can change the normal import method to import normals and tangents. Re-import the mesh to apply these changes. Once again, we're borrowing from the SMG setup. Copy its blueprint BP underscore SMG over to our new weapon and rename it. The only required change is to set the name inside the blueprint to match the blueprint's name, in this case HK433. Optionally, you can adjust the compatible attachments list. This way, you can prevent users from adding a sniper scope to a pistol or other unwanted combos. If you place this blueprint into the map at this point, you will see nothing, because the system isn't aware of it yet. Go to Blueprints, Data Tables and open DT underscore Weapons. Simply duplicate the SMG row and rename it to the exact same name you gave to the weapon to connect the weapon to the system. This must match, otherwise the system can't recognize the weapon. Change the mesh, the magazine size and capacity to your liking as well as several other parameters. For this example I'm simply going to change it to assault rifle and change the rounds per minute to 700 as well as the range and the damage output. 
There are even more features down below such as SFX and VFX, which we won't touch in this tutorial, as they are enough self-explanatory. Next, open DT underscore MPS underscore Anims and duplicate the SMG row. Once again, make sure that you give it the exact same name. Before editing the data table, let's test out what we've got so far. Drag the new weapons blueprint into the map. Find its details panel to the right and check, is spawned? This will ensure that the weapon won't vanish in game. Already here, you could apply different optics and attachments, however, since we haven't edited the sockets of the weapon, they will all appear at the weapons route. Let's fix this. Open the SMG skeleton and copy all its sockets. Paste them onto the weapon bone and adjust their positions accordingly. You can ease positioning by previewing a temporary mesh. Pay special attention to the aim target socket, as it needs to align exactly with the iron sights. You can switch from perspective to left orthographic view to simplify the alignment process. If you pick up the weapon now, you're more than likely going to have some unwanted offsets. Thankfully, the system comes with transform tools, so you can quickly adjust the offsets in-game. Drag out the DT underscore MPS underscore Anims data table and scroll all the way down to Weapon Transforms. You can press F8 or hit the controller button in the top bar to pause the game. Now you can freely position the camera to have a good look at the weapon. At this point you can adjust the location, rotation, or scale. To apply those changes, unpause the game, F8, and switch back and forth between the weapons to force update the transforms. As you can see, this is a trial and error process. Nonetheless, it's a relatively creative and quick way to modify the offsets. Furthermore, you get to see the end result right away. Note, when you're happy with the weapon offset, apply those changes in your DCC software and reset the weapon transforms back to 0, 0, 0. In Blender, the transform factor is a 100 times less, so for example 2 becomes 0.02. .02. Apply all transform changes, export, and re-import the mesh in Unreal. This process is only needed for the weapon offset, not for the hand offsets. Adjust the right and left hands to your liking as well. To complete the system integration, we need to be able to load the weapon through the menus. However, when trying to load the weapon through the loadout menu, you can see it loaded it, but you can't select it. To fix this, navigate to the Widgets folder and select the Widget Weapon layer. Go to Graph and find the Weapons Array variable. Add a new row and select the new weapon. Save and close it. Now you can load the weapon via the in-game menu and modify it as well. Let's attach a foregrip to it. As you can see, also this hand position needs to be adjusted using the same technique as before, this time modifying LH Grip Transform.
In the last part of this tutorial, we make use of the built-in procedural ADS tool to match the site alignments. Open the Anim BP underscore MPS underscore master, found in Blueprints, Core. Jump in game. Wait until the weapon draw animation has completed and press 0 on your keyboard. This will open the ADS tool overlay and snap the camera to the aim target socket we aligned earlier. Currently, the tool allows you to adjust the distance to the site and you can switch between different aim targets if you have them equipped. Press Shift plus Tab gain control of the mouse cursor while still letting the game run in the background. Go to the Anim Blueprint and make sure that the animation is also playing in the preview on the left-hand corner. If it doesn't, select the Spawn character from the drop-down menu in the top bar as shown. Next go to Tools, Create Asset, Create Animation, Current Pose and save it in the Weapons Animations directory. A new window will pop up with the new pose. Scroll down to Additive Settings and change the Additive Anim Type to Local Space, Base Pose Type to Selected Animation Frame and for the Source File select the SMG Aim Idle Animation at Frame 0. Optionally, we can also set up the Laser Aim Pose in the same manner. Exit the game and navigate to the new animations. Right-click on the Iron Sight Anim and hit Create Animation Composite. Add additional poses such as the Laser Aim pose if you have any. Note, the system uses a specific order for those poses. It always starts with Iron Sights, then Laser Aim pose and after that specific optics. To apply the poses, open DT underscore MPS underscore Anims and change aim poses to the one we just created. This concludes the first part of the weapon tutorial for MPS version 3. We have imported a new weapon, complete with texture setup, static and skeletal meshes. We set it up with various variables that impact the shooting mechanics, fine-tuned the offsets and finally created several procedural ADS poses. The next tutorial will cover how to add your own animations and how to adjust the existing reload animations to match the new weapon.